Hey, welcome back guys. This is Jason, KM4ACK. Today, I want to introduce you to a suite of applications called Pi Apps. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Real quick before we get going today, I've got to give a shout out to these guys. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. So I stumbled across this suite of applications recently and wanted to share it with you guys. It is very similar in the way it works to build a Pi, but the applications are not amateur radio specific. However, there's a lot of different things contained within this suite that you guys might find interesting. So let's go ahead and jump over to the Raspberry Pi and take a look at getting this installed. So on this Raspberry Pi, I am running a base installation of Bullseye. I have not loaded Build-A-Pi onto this yet, but what I'm going to show you here in just a second, you could go ahead and run on top of a Build-A-Pi build. Now, the first thing we need to do is we need to head over to this website, github.com forward slash bot spot forward slash pi hyphen apps. And I'll leave that right along the screen here for you. And all we're going to do is we're going to scroll down until we find the install section. So I'm going to take this code and just click right here to copy that. And we'll go ahead and head back over to our terminal window. I'm going to right click and paste that in and go ahead and hit return. It'll take it just a few minutes to get everything downloaded and installed. Once the script finishes up, you should have a new icon under your accessories menu. So I'm coming down to accessories and I'll see Pi app. So we'll go ahead and click on that to open it and I'm gonna minimize that terminal window. Once it loads up, you will see all of the different categories of applications that you have to choose from. Now, in particular, and kind of what got me uh, looking at this particular package, is an application called Veriscript. So we'll go ahead and walk through installing Veriscript. So I'm just going to double click on Tools, and then I'm going to scroll all the way down to the bottom. And I shouldn't be calling it Veriscript, it's actually Veracrypt. I should have known better. Anyway, I'm going to highlight that and go ahead and click Install. And let PyApps do its thing for installing this. I told you guys this was very similar to build a Pi. And once it's done, you should get a confirmation like this here where it says installed whatever application you picked, successful. And it'll let you know that it's going to close this window in 30 seconds. Once that 30 seconds has elapsed, you will be back in the Pi Apps main application. Now we can go ahead and choose other things that we want to install. If we use the little back arrow here, it will take us back to that main categories page. So there are, gosh, I don't know, I haven't even looked at this and I've only tried a few of these. And I do see the warning up here uh, for bullseye users. Uh, that they are working to get some of the bugs worked out. Hopefully that won't take very long. I do know that Veracrypt installs and works, and that was kind of the main thing that I was looking for in this. But if you look, uh, let's just take a look at multimedia here. You can see all of the different applications that we have available to us in the multimedia category. Uh, I know there's a ton of games on here. I don't play very many games on the Raspberry Pi, I'll have to admit. Uh, but let's take a look at the internet category, and you'll see that there is a whole host of different applications that they put in the uh, internet category here. Okay, so before we close out of this video, that's kind of all there is to Pi Apps. If you're not familiar with Veracrypt, I want to show you guys kind of how this works. So let's go ahead and just open up the Veracrypt application. Now, Veracrypt will create encrypted containers on another file. And I actually already have an encrypted container sitting right here on the drive that I just moved over to the desktop. 
and I've been using VeraCrypt for several years now, my primary use case for it is I create this encrypted container file on a thumb drive that I keep with me all the time. And I keep things like driver's license, passports, uh, and any other critical documents that I think I might need. But if I lose the thumb drive, I know that all of this information is encrypted. So let's go ahead and take a look at this container. So I'm going to select the file and we'll go over to the desktop and we'll select that one. And we'll go ahead and come right down to the bottom and click the open button. Now, the next thing we need to do is tell it, uh, we just got to select one of these slots for it to mount that drive. So we'll just select slot one for this one and go ahead and click mount. Now it's going to ask me for the password for this encrypted container. Once you've keyed in your password, just go ahead and click OK. Now, I am going to admit it takes quite a bit longer on the Raspberry Pi to decrypt these containers as compared to my Mac, which is the primary platform that I run this on. But I just wanted to have a copy of this on the Raspberry Pi so that if I needed into that container, I could get into it as long as I had a Raspberry Pi up and running. Okay, so that took probably two, maybe three minutes to get that container decrypted. And now you'll notice out here on the desktop that I have this 3.2 gigabyte volume. And that's the size of the container that I created. And guys, if you want to know more about stuff like this, uh, I've kind of been going through a deep dive of security, especially online security. If you guys would be interested in more videos on that topic, leave it down in the comments below. Okay, so now that VeraCrypt has decrypted that container, now we can just double click on it and we can use this just like any other drive on our Raspberry Pi. So if I wanted to create new files or drag and drop things in here, I could up to this 3.2 gigabyte limit. Once you're done, you just close out of that and you'll come right down here in the VeraCrypt app and go ahead and select dismount all. And you'll notice that the 3.2 gig container or drive uh, on the desktop is gone. And we're simply left with this uh, V other file here that I created that is the encrypted container itself. So I hope you enjoy the additional applications that are available with Pi Apps. And I am super excited to see other Linux developers taking the same approach to their applications that I took with Build-A-Pi so that we can easily install just what we want and leave everything else uninstalled. If you found this video helpful, be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7-3.